Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another installment of Club Moffat Talks. My name is Chris. I'm Joe. I'm Ryan. And we are joined today by a very special guest. Would you like to introduce yourself, Jeff? Sure. My name is uh, Jeff Killian. I'm currently the Dean of the College of Health Science and Human Services. And I think this is the beginning of my 21st year. We'll be uh, this oh, fall. Oh, goodness. Wow. Maybe 22. Wow, Crazy. very impressive. Oh, oh, and before uh, before I forget, um, I'm a librarian. <laughs> an instruction librarian. An in instruction of a librarian, yeah. I, I noticed on our, our schedule we have the position and role of each host, so it's true. Uh, I guess we haven't done that in a while. Yeah. I'm, I am a librarian here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also an instruction librarian. I'm a world traveling super spy. Oh, wait, no, I'm a librarian. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Same, same. same. <laughs> Witness protection program. So. <laughs> Lib librarian. <laughs> yeah, supposedly. <laughs> All right, so uh, we're going to try to stick to a little bit more of a, a stricter schedule this week because the last few times we've we've done this, it's just kind of been off the rails. So, um, yeah, we've got, Joe, you put together the schedule based on um, what we've done before, kind of? I actually put the schedule together based on you and Ryan's first podcast. You In, in, in your first podcast, you pretended like you were going to follow a schedule and be organized. It was uh, admirable and naive. Uh, it, was, it was beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> And then All we probably right. forgot about it. Yeah, we've definitely forgot about it. So before we get into the the, the real meat of the discussion, um, I guess what we had on our old schedule was just kind of a kind of a quick recap uh, what's happening on campus or in the community. And um, well, nothing's really happening on campus, I guess. Is there anything going on in in the summer at the moment? Just the regular summer session. We started what summer one now, right? That's correct. And we have another doing some like summer camps on campus for cheerleading and soccer and stuff. Yeah, that's yeah. These funny. are these are the quiet days of a campus to some extent. Um, is this, is this Halcyon right? days or is that something different? Halcyon? I've heard that phrase before. I have heard that phrase. I'm not exactly sure what it references. I'm, I'm going to look it up right now. It's going to be it's going to be something like a like a heavy drug usage or something. I'm sure. <laughs> well, isn't it like like sunshine days, or is that a completely different thing? Oh no, P a period of calm during the winter. Okay, good. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, good. All right. Gee, if we only had librarians, we could look it up. <laughs> <laughs> Some and then I guess we just have some other things like going on in the community right now. I'll just recap these really quickly just because uh, it's something happening in the summer. There's really nothing happening in the, in the college at all. So I might as well just talk about what's going on in the community at large. First off, we've got the uh, the Falls Freedom Fest, July 4th. I will not be here on July 4th, so uh, I thought I would just mention that. I'm just going down this list that Joe put together. Uh, that's at the Impact. We've got yeah. food trucks, vendors, car show, live music, a beer tent. Maybe I will stay. Um, kids activities, fireworks, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, we have an artwork in Wichita, uh, artwork, an art walk in Wichita Falls. It happens on the first Thursday of every month. It's actually really, really fun. Uh, we get vendors everywhere, um, like just kind of foodly things sometimes some of our local restaurants will sh will set up like food trucks and, and other kind of things to give away free samples or do like exclusive things for just just to uh, promote their businesses so that one's really fun it's free yeah <laughs> it's, often, it's often really live nice music to at that too in. isn't there what was that joe i said often live music down there isn't there oh like every street corner there's there's live music yeah yeah, so that's fun. I, I encourage anyone who's who's interested in that to to go down to uh, the Art Walk downtown. It's very nice. 
Um, Farmer's Market has new summer hours. Uh, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, 7.30 to 1. Um, the Wichita Falls Brewing Company has live trivia every Thursday starting in July. And uh, the Museum of Art at MSU Texas is going to have a Live at the Lake concert on July 14th at 6 p.m. So that's all happening in the first half of July, really. So that's kind of crazy. Yeah. All right. All right. Now that we've taken care of all that business. <laughs> Oh, right. Yeah. So there's there's our first gigantic pause for the episode. Uh, what are we what are we really doing? What are we occupying our, our time with? Jeff, you want to start that off? Just like if you're reading something or watching like a, a television program or just anything that's catching your attention at the moment. I, uh, I guess if you go with television programs, I've kind of been been watching, catching up on things. Just finished. Um, uh, Longmire, I guess that was a West. Oh, yeah, that's, that was interesting. And then before that, I I've been holding off on watching Yellowstone. And then once I got into that, I kind of ended up been watching that and and 1883 and and uh, and then for Goofy, I just finished watching. Uh, I think it's called the Bruise Brothers or something like that. Hmm. It got canceled on Netflix after one season. But oh, two two brothers that open a brewery or something. So it's kind of just uh. goofy, goofy, but. Yeah, during the semester, a lot of times I don't get time to watch TV, or I try and not get uh, get too attached to any series because mm. then it's kind of like I want to watch or have to watch. I usually don't have time, and I and I won't have the discipline, so I'll stay up half the night because I don't want to put the remote down and, and go to bed. So I usually wait till summer when I have a little more time. How about you all? Well, I will say this about Chris. Chris is a completist. So if he watches something, he has to watch all of it. And it, I keep yeah. telling him he doesn't <laughs> have to watch all of it. He can he can watch the good stuff. There are people who have reviews and say, this part of it's good, this part of it's bad, watch this, don't watch. He's like, no, I have to watch all of it. So Chris <laughs> spends all of his time like focused on like one anime series that, or one, uh, uh, one franchise series of some sort, and he has to watch every single thing in it. And you're crazy, Chris. I love you, but you're crazy. And you're gonna... uh, I watched I watched 42 years of the Mobile Suit Gundam franchise in like six months because I was like, I want to watch Gundam. I want to see what that's like. I'd only seen a few spinoffs and, and whatever. I want to see what that's all about. So three months later, when I'm through with like the main part of it, I, I told Ryan, like, I'm getting into the spinoffs now. I have like five 50 episode series to get into. Oh my um, and then and then recently it was um I ran out of Gundam. I ran out of a bunch of other stuff, uh, and I said, you know what? I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do the Marvel thing. I'm gonna do the the Marvel cinematic thing, because um, I hadn't done it. Uh, the last one that I had seen was uh, the Avengers in theaters when I was in college. So I'm like, okay, well, I've got nothing else going on. And Ryan was trying to tell me like there are, there are a million of these things, and like half of them are not good. So maybe <laughs> maybe skip a few. Like here's a good list of of them to go down. And I said. You people were telling me that some of these were good, so I'm going to do all of them. It's all or nothing. <laughs> so, like, uh, the last podcast that we did, actually, I was I was just starting to do it, and I was telling them, like, man, I hate the the Hulk, and Iron Man 1 was okay, and Iron Man 2 is fine, and then Joe told me I'm wrong about Iron Man 2. <laughs> but, uh, so, um, to, to, um, to update my report, I've watched all of it. Um, I haven't done the Netflix stuff. Well, I'm I finished the first season of Daredevil. I'm doing Jessica Jones now. Um, I'm not. He does pressed, everything. I'm not as pressed on that one because it's not supposed to like those. Those might not be part of it anymore. But yeah, I did the whole thing. Uh, I did it in three weeks. So uh, yeah, uh, I was I pushed myself to it, and then I I was like, well, I ran out of I ran out of those, so I'm gonna keep doing the the comic book thing. So now I'm totally caught up on the DC stuff as well. Uh, I think I have like an episode or two left of Peacemaker. Um, I don't even have an opinion on it. I'm just like, I'm done with them. I watch them. I consume them. You don't even have fun doing it. You do it just to do it. That's just I had a lot of fun watching uh, the the new Suicide Squad and Peacemaker. Those are good. Good. Those were fantastic. And the I actually liked the Zack Snyder Justice League five-hour epic. I thought that one was pretty fun, too. 
Um, I know and that then I my gave wife Joe my collection of the award-winning uh, graphic novel series Astro City, which you yeah, worked I'm, through. I'm reading through those. I finished Tarnished Angel, and I read the first chapter of uh, Local Heroes. That's where I am in it. Uh, the only thing I'm going to suggest to people is if you haven't caught the new um, Star Trek series, Strange New Worlds, it is actually very good. It reminds me a lot of the original series. I'm going to start watching that, too. Um, I've got nothing else. That's all I'm doing. Uh, I've got a five-month-old now who's learning how to say dada, so I don't have time for a whole lot. <laughs> um, she's like, she's the, she is both my... Um, my mandatory uh, thing that I have to do at home and also my primary source of entertainment now. So, um, yeah, the, the fewer things I have to really concentrate on for that. Um, but yeah, I think, I think that's, that about covers it. I think we're all watching some pretty good stuff. By the way, my wife tries to keep me in line with watching things that aren't garbage. So she put on the departed the other day and I didn't pay attention to it. <laughs> She really likes Scorsese, so I was like, wow, this looks like this would be great. Anyway, I gotta go change the diaper. <laughs> All right, so, um, Jeff, we've got you on today to talk about uh, really your department and what it is that you do here and, and just anything really that you that you kind of want to bring up that, that the community at large might want to really hear about. All right. So we're going to just hand that off to you, and we might have some questions every now and then, but for the most part, just whatever it is that you that you really have that you want to talk about, just go right. nuts. Well, sounds good. Well, I know we originally started talking about the, the doctoral program starting yeah. a, a, in radiological science, so I thought I'd give kind of a back. Well, people are curious. People want yeah. to know what's going on with it, you know? Yeah. And uh, we kind of hit some roadblocks, but it, uh, it will eventually get her there. It's just it's uh, it's there's some political things, and not only in the within the state, but in the profession. So, uh, so I, but I thought I'd first start it's the our whole kind of uh, field of radiology or the department of radiology has a very interesting past and in how it, it became at Midwestern. So I thought I'd start that way and walk through sure. kind of a timeline, and then then we'll kind of end where where we're at the the getting the doctoral, but what's kind of, you know, the interesting part about it is clear back in 1972, there's a group of, uh, of uh, Air Force that taught the men that taught radiology out the Air Force Base in Shepard, and they were retiring. And so when they did that, they started getting a, uh, a program kind of set up with Midwestern and through Shepard. And so back in 1972, they started an associate program. And then uh, they brought it over to Midwestern State when they when they uh, retired and came here. And then in 1974, they thought, well, let's try a bachelor program along with that, the associates program. And what was very unique about that in 1972, they made it independent study because they knew their Air Force folks. They, they thought well, it'd be good to get them a bachelor's. But what happens after a few years? They, they spread out all over the world and uh, the country. So they made an independent study where they'd send these books out to you since there wasn't any internet at that time. And you would go through these books and take tests and then send them back. And they had these uh, computers. You could actually go through and it'd, it'd print off some things with this, the, um, the printer paper that had like the, the whatever the little pegs on the end to, to feed the paper through. And anyways, they'd come up with the answers. And then they'd check on a on a form. And then uh, you had to actually come back to campus once during that during a semester and take a final exam. And uh, so this was started in 1974, kind of distance ed. And then it kind of evolved where they started getting the internet going a little bit, but uh, that didn't happen until in the 90s after actually distance ed was located when they first started here, Pam Morgan, she started it up and her office was actually right next to in radiology when I first got here she was next to me in, in our in Bridwell and so they uh they've been they've been along for the ride and of course at the beginning too Midwestern State was kind of a, a push back on well no distance ed we can't have that uh, just a little bit we have to have traditional in the in the classroom so 
as a as a culture at the university or probably, I mean every university you had to to have this transition of, of wrapping your head around people don't need to be in the classroom and and uh, and uh, they can be anywhere so as that kind of transitioned I actually uh, grew up in in uh, Colorado I call Colorado and Iowa my home but my, I was born in Colorado and then uh, went to school there and my two uh, instructors at, at my radiology school were coming down to Midwestern. And so right before I graduated, I said, well, I'll take a trip down with you and and drove down with them. And because one of our professors had to do that last test. And, uh, and I came and, and saw Midwestern State Campus in 1990. And I thought, that's what I want to do. I want to I want to come. But um, kind of just a quick bit of history on me is I was kind of a lost soul when I first graduate high school. I went back to Iowa. That's where my grandparents and then the family farm was at. So I went back there and worked and I didn't even go to college right away after after high school. And so I did that for a while, but I kept getting uh, people asking you, what are you going to do with your life? What are you going to do with your life? I'm going to be a farmer. And, and then the, <laughs> the farming crisis hit. So they could only use me for uh, part part of the year on the family farm my uncle had at that time. And and then uh, I worked for seed corn company. So finally, I decided, well, I better come back. So I went to the University of Colorado when I first started. I was just lost and went there. And But uh, I went there on a beer drinking scholarship. And, <laughs> and so I, I, I didn't pass too many classes, so I wasn't doing so well there. And then then the back of my mind, I remembered in high school, I was in Boy Scouts called uh, Explorer Club. And we went to a hospital in Wheat Ridge, Colorado, and they told you about uh, – uh, all the different careers in the in the medical profession, and they had an X-ray program. There it was actually a hospital-based program. Uh, we had six students in my class, and that's where my two uh, instructors were at. And then they came to Midwestern, so in a roundabout way. So I got introduced to Midwestern through them, and so I came down here um, and actually lived in the dorms. I mentioned it was a kind of distance ed program, but when you're on the beer drinking scholarship, you don't get too many credits. So I had to take all the pretty much the general ed, all that stuff. So I lived in the dorms, um, played sports, had, had a great time here at Midwestern State. And then after that, I uh, graduated and moved up to Iowa. And and, uh, and with this bachelor's degree that I got from Midwestern State, um, I got a job on site unseen for Iowa Lakes Community College. And it was just because of that degree. And why I mentioned that is, the field of a lot of the professions in, in our allied health that we call or nursing and in, in, uh, medical, most of them were hospital-based programs. And if you had a degree, that kind of moved you to the top of the, of the food chain in the profession because most people didn't even have a degree. And so I was at Iowa Lakes one year and they were connected with another community college in Iowa called Iowa Central Community College. And they they said uh, the program director left, so they said, "Well, you're going to be the program director now." And I'm like, "Oh my God, no! I don't I don't have any experience." And they said, "Nope, oh, you're going to be the program director." So at 24, I was the program director, and it wasn't because of my experience; it was because of the degree from Midwestern State. At that time, the crediting bodies, most of our programs here in the Health Science Human Service has a crediting body outside of SACS, and so they set rules and regulations of of, of uh, to maintain that make sure that at entry level, this is what the, the, the student will have. And then also they maintain that certain um, degree levels for the instructors teaching. So that's the only reason I got that job. And um, and then so then after uh, I was at Iowa Central for a while, and then all of a sudden I got this card in the mail that said Midwestern State University is starting the first master's program in the United States in radiological science. So now I'm back to my timeline. And uh, and so in 1995, um, Midwestern State University, it's probably the first master's program in the in the whole world, but they started um, that master's program in 1995. And, uh, and that kind of back to my story where you don't have uh, degrees in, in this allied health that much. So bachelor's is kind of brown breaking. And now we've got a, the first master's. So, uh, that is significant that Midwestern State um, kind of changed the the outlook of the profession of radiology because then about probably 10 years later, the our accrediting body that I mentioned before for radiology actually moved up the program director now needs to be a master's level. And then SACS, our regional accreditation, they recognize that, okay, now that's the terminal degree for 
for professors in radiology. And so as other programs opened up, they said, though, your professors or, or your instructors have to have this degree. If not, you have to <laughs> explain why they don't have this or how they're qualified. So that was kind of brown breaking in, in, uh, in 1995. And then a few late, late years later, I came here in uh, 1999. And um, a few years later, MSU started in 2005. Another kind of groundbreaking is a radiological assistant, uh, radiologist assistant. And it's kind of like a PA, but for radiology. And um, with uh, radiology, we have MDs, they're called the radiologists. They actually interpret the images of our old x-rays. Now we now that everything's digital. But um, so the, the radiologists, they're the MDs that read this and, and they have to do all the procedures. Well, now we came up with a profession uh, that grew, it's called the radiologist assistant, where they can actually be the, the hands-on, the patient, do the exam and give maybe a preliminary reading. They don't give an official interpretation of the image, but a preliminary reading. So now this profession, it's kind of, um, they tried to start it clear back in 1970. The U.S. government came to um, Duke University, and I, there's one other, I think the University of Kentucky, they tried to get them to start this, and, and it just never, they got it for a few years, I think four years at last, and then it kind of died out because they were needing um, physicians in the in the military to help, they had a shortage to help read these images and stuff, but never really took off. So that kind of started back in the 70s and died out. And then, uh, then a program at Weber State started up in the in the 90s, late 90s, and kind of kind of got it going. But then uh, in 2005, the profession said this is a, a great mid-level provider that that uh, that would be great for the profession because there's a shortage of radiologists. Uh, it's there. There's not that many. There is a shortage across the country, and this could help fill the gap and also save uh, people money because a lot of times the PAs when they do an exam, they don't get paid the 100% like that CMS would pay for a radiologist or a regular doctor. They get paid at 80%. So save a little money, get better care. So the ASRT, it's the American Society of Radiologic Technologists, um, came out with some grants, $25,000 grants, and they were going to award four of those to schools across the country to officially start a radiologist assistant program. Uh, me and uh, Dr. Donna Wright, we wrote a grant and uh, and got it accepted at the ASRT. It was University of uh, North Carolina, Chapel Hill. They got the grant, Rutgers University out of New Jersey, and then Loma Linda out of California and Midwestern State University. So the, the four, that's a pretty good company to be in. And so we started the program and then uh, graduated our, our first class in 2007 and actually uh, Vicki Sanders, she's uh, on faculty now. She was in that first class. And uh, and that was the first time I've ever kind of got to experience um, starting a brand new program. And then the, the hard part was at the end of this, there are students, when they graduate, they have to take uh, like their boards or here a certification from the American Registry of Radiologic Technologists. And what was interesting is we're developing this program and they're trying to develop a test. And so it's a moving mark. Every time we talk to the, the ART, it'd be like, well, now we're going to more over here. We're going to test on this or we test on this. So our poor students, we kept preaching flexibility. <laughs> you got to be flexible because this is a moving target and we're doing the best we can. So, uh, so that's kind of groundbreaking that Midwestern started one of the first uh, RA programs and the, uh, radiologic science program. And then that brings us kind of to, we want to start the first doctoral program. And so we, uh, at first we thought a few years ago that uh, maybe if we join with um, uh, uh, with the education, doctor of education, that we that might be unique. And so what our first plan was that we'd share the core because you all have the, our all doctoral programs have your, st your stats or your, your leadership, your research, your thesis and that area. So we thought we could share some core components and that would make it unique for the, the state coordinating board, the Texas State Coordinating Board, and, and that might be our niche. Well, the MSU had never offered a doctoral program before, so there was, we had a hurdle there. First, we have to apply to be able to offer a program. And the state's got different tiers Excuse me, and uh, 
and the first one is where the school can offer up to three doctoral programs. So that's when we applied for and we got that. And then we had to go to SACS and and do a substantial change that we're going to offer a, a higher degree at the university. So just to break through that barrier was was a, a quite a, a good accomplishment. And then we went to uh, the coordinating board. We had to do all this research and fill out all these applications and and do uh, like external uh, reviews. You get experts in the field to look over your documents and then you send it to the state and then the state does a, uh, a review. And when they we first came to them with both of them, we kind of got a little pushback because as we started uh, with, uh, with two programs and they're saying that's never been done before. And uh, what I mean by that is that a, a university is offering doctoral programs for the first time. They kind of want you to put your training wheels on first and do one and do that well, and then we can add another. So they, mm -hmm. they said it's never been done before. So we advise you that you should probably back one of these off, whichever one you want. That's, that's up to you all. So, um, there's the pros and cons was that, the radiology one, the radiologic science doctor would be the first of its kind. So that might be appealing to the state. And then uh, or on the other hand, we have the doctor of education. And the plus there was that they've been offering classes on campus for a while. They were joined with the University of North Texas. And so they were actually teaching these classes. So then after visiting and talking, we thought that would be the easier of the two because it's been established. And so that was the, the path of least resistance. So we, we got that in there and pushed the, the doctor of radiological science back a year. Okay. So then the next year we submitted it all over again. And then we uh, had got to the point where we're having um, the external reviewers. Well, we kind of ran into uh, some pushback there, which we didn't uh, quite expect, but uh, there was one of the reviewers was uh, kind of philosophical was kind of did the profession of radiology need it and so that was a whole other conversation that that uh, we tried to kind of steer away that that's not the question for the state that we're trying to answer what the question is is can midwestern state offer the degree and the philosophical debate about in the profession that that should happen in the profession because we have people that um they think, what, you don't need another higher degree. Well, they said that same thing with the master's degree. They even said it with the bachelor's degree. So it's a for our profession, which I mentioned at the beginning of my rambling here, is that it's 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 learning that to be or to get uh, to be recognized as professionals, you have to have degrees. And but a lot of people that are working out in the field, they like, well, I don't need it. I can do take the MRI, CT, radio, I mean, X-ray, uh, diagnostic, all these different areas, but I'm, I, you don't have to even have a bachelor's. You can get away with a, an associate degree in those. And the profession, not till 2000, or, uh, 2012, finally said that the entry level is at an associate degree level. And, uh, and so that's, and then to jump to the bachelor's, I don't know if that'll ever happen. Now, it, it's gonna take some, uh, a lot of time and effort because most of the of the training actually happens at community college. It's not at four-year institutions, so that kind of kind of puts a roadblock. But the reason I mention all this, the 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 United States government doesn't officially recognize uh, the field of radiology sciences as a professional um, area. They more think it's a a technical, and the reason that is is I've learned that. And hopefully this is right. If I remember right. 50% of the workers in that profession has to have a bachelor's degree or above. And right now the field of radiology or radiology science doesn't meet that, that, mm. that tier or that definition. It's getting close. I want to say it's in the, in the forties, but it's, so it's, it's a battle that we, we do to try and get recognized because other people in the professions and the medical profession, they see themselves as, as the, uh, the professionals. And then sometimes they think of, of a lot of our allied health with like um, radiology, respiratory, um, all the different areas that they're kind of, we're not professionals, you're, you're technical. And so we, we fight those battles. So within the field, come back around, within the field of radiology, we have this own internal, trying to educate our own people because it's, uh, 
uh, a lot of people, they don't see the benefit of the degree. They go, ah, I'm, I'm making money. I don't need that degree. It won't advance me. And that's where I sell a lot to the, what I mean by sell is when I'm visiting with students that by getting a bachelor's, you're going to differentiate yourself from everybody else in that field that has associates. So if, if a promotion comes up or if you want to be in managerial or want to be education and teach or anything, or, or um, there's so many offspurs, you can get into pharmaceuticals, you can get into sales of, of extra equipment. If you come in and you have a bachelor's over some of the soldiers, they're going to hire, they're going to select you and that's where it's going to pay off. And then same same with me, that, that bachelor's degree, that's what got me that program director job it wasn't me, it was, it was the degree. And the same with my master's degree, got me the job here at Midwestern. And then I went on and got a doctoral degree, which I wish it could have been in radiology science, but that enabled me to become a full professor and now dean, crazy. And yeah, I was about to say that that surprises me because if nothing else, it seems that the educational aspect of having a PhD program would be would be great for for the country. Just you know, I mean, okay, does the does the does the um, does the profession it? Maybe not, but it, it is something great for at least someone who's doing the educational aspect of radiology to be able to get their PhD in radiology if they're going to teach it. You know? Yeah. 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 The other areas is uh, like uh, even the master's program. We have to do a, a thesis or dissertation at the doctoral level. There's hardly any any uh, research out there in radiography, so we're we're playing catch up. So that's what we need people that that get these higher degrees to get do research and advance the field and things yeah. like that. So the all the heavyweights in the profession, the American Society of Radiologic Science, the, the American Registry of Radiologic Science, all support even our crazy bodies. They all support this doctorate. And we got letters from all of the these folks, but it's a uh, it's kind of like uh, with the masters. Uh, we had same questions from the state coordinating board in the profession, and now everybody accepts that. And there's there's 36 master's programs now across the country, and so it's it's we we were pioneers then, and now we're pioneers now. But there's there's good and bad being the first. That being the first, you're the first, <laughs> so you gotta take down the barriers. So, uh, but then it's also cool if you are the first. So I think we'll get her get her done here or this summer. We're we're putting together the. Uh, uh, package again to send in the state and then we'll we'll go that route again but this also we have to educate the the state folks too and uh because a lot of times they like to know what jobs you're going to get with this and uh we'll, and so it's and i hate that about the about academia now it, it's yeah. it's so um what's the end result how will this benefit me type of way yeah. Instead, of, again, we're supposed to be a liberal arts college. It's supposed to be about the love of learning and, the, and and basically critical thinking skills and creating independent thinkers. But now it's like, how will this make me more money in my career? Yeah. I mean, I just hate that aspect. They, 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 they want to know specifically. I guess they're they're on this where you do this, you get this job, and so it's hard to it's hard to quantify that because we keep telling them just like our master students, all of them it'll advance their career, but there's not just one job they can get. They may become now program directors or deans or and, and move on up or, or even in the um, education will be the main focus of, of the degree. But even out there, the managers are they can move up now VPs of hospitals or sure. presidents and clinics. So but they need that. But it's hard to it's hard. They want to know how much they're going to make and where are they going? Well, it's, <laughs> it's hard. to. Who knows? Yeah, yes. who knows? But it but to show them that it advances their their field, the career, the profession. So it's a it's we've got this learning curve both at, in the profession and at the state level that we we have to overcome. So so we had to back down from it last time, last uh, when we went through there, kind of this philosophical. So we like this isn't good. So we decided instead of having a, a no or maybe or a possibility that we pulled it back ourselves. We said that's we visited with the state and I said why don't you pull it back and then then get some more information and come at it kind of from this angle. So that's what we're, we're, we're gearing up for another shot. Well, again, you can always make the argument, and I've always been this way as well, that inter, there needs to be more interdisciplinary um, positions of administration, I think. Yeah. So I could see someone with a degree like this being a hospital administrator or something like that. Because again, uh, the, one of the problems about if you, if you are too focused, your answers are all going to be the same. It becomes, yeah. you know, this, this, this echo room of stuff like stuff. So bringing in someone from a different aspect, for instance, um, my old, um, the old uh, 
the library I used to be uh, a member at, their new director was actually had a degree in history is what he had. And I've seen people who have uh, degrees, PhDs in uh, museum curating become directors of libraries. I okay. think, again, this a, a PhD in radiology could have the same benefits for the health administration, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. And, uh, and a while back, even in hospital administration, they when I first got out, cleared late kind of, I, I graduated in 90, but then through much through the 90s to 2000, there was kind of this push to get the MBAs into the into the directors for radiology departments. Well, they had the business background, so that was good, but they had no idea how to run the radios or the bat or the how the ongoings went so it kind of it, it failed miserably and so now what we've come up with like even our masters we got two tracks an education and administration so we can get them those tools of how you acquire equipment how you do rfp i mean all that stuff so we kind of try and combine the two or or get that different perspective like you were mentioning ryan so if they if you get up you kind of have into the higher parts of a hospital administration you have a, a bane but also from a different angle and so you're not just a bean counter or and or yeah. yeah it's not all about the business aspects it's about you understand the technology behind things you understand yeah. the uh yeah what, what it takes to, to do the uh, technological aspects of things yeah and so what's also interesting is um dr james johnson who is our interim president and now provost he as the background was radiology and and uh, as far as we knew at the time he was the first provost that had a radiological science background and the first president or interim president. So that's kind of neat that they're for the field of radiology to have some people show that this degree has worth and by getting a doctorate, that if we had one in our profession, it, it can kind of be groundbreaking and other for others too. And so that's was kind of neat. The very first class I taught, he was a student in, actually. Yeah, isn't that crazy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was a student. Uh, I was here, and then he went through the program when I taught him. <laughs> yeah. Well, I saw him again. I'm like, did he fail? And 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 he's taking the course again. Is that what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then he started yeah, he was leading here. instruction. I'm like, oh, apparently not. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We we recruited him to get here, so that was kind of <laughs> cool. <laughs> Another kind of first for radiology that just stuck my head when uh, when we built this the new building here, um, James and Doctor. Oh, beautiful Sh new building, by the way. Oh, we love it. Yeah, if you haven't been over here, or if anybody's listening, please come see me. I'll be happy to give you a tour. What about uh, Centennial? Yeah, Centennial Hall. Okay, I have a question. Yeah. About the building, Ryan brought it up to me, oh, and. God. Um, <laughs> It's it has nothing to do with with talking about yeah, radiology or the program or anything, but we have to know. In front of the elevators, there is just a big or like not even big. It's like a closet. It's like a big yeah, glass exactly what closet thing. About. What is that? Please, we argued about it for like an hour. How a many few, a few it was months a shower. ago. <laughs> it what is it? Like a glass shower is what. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it looks like. It looks like a like you go in there to to uh, do like a chemical bath or whatever. <laughs> it's supposed to be a, a display cabinet. Of that's what we thought. That's when what the thought. building was built. I, I think initially it was for something that dental hygiene had, but then I don't think it fits. So right now we're uh, trying to figure out what to do with it. When we have like our each each profession has a, like a month, like a nursing week or month and so during that time we let the, those departments decorate or put something up there and christmas time we put stuff in there to celebrate the season but uh yeah i've got to find something to put in there because it looks <laughs> it looks so odd everybody says that they will find like what is that you, you have I no idea how like much machinery that... goes in or something like because i know over in diller they they show off all the servers and stuff like that but there's not yeah. enough outlets in there so i'm like oh no, yeah so what? it's kind of yeah, and then and they didn't kind of talk to us when they built it. Otherwise, I mean, if it was bigger, then we could put a lot more stuff in there. Because each department... Also, it's in a weird place for display, too, because it's kind of like back and hidden in a corner. Yeah. You know? It's in a yeah. hallway. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, Thank you so I, much for, for finally laying that to rest. Because yeah, I think... <laughs> we were, I, I took... I, I mentioned it to my wife later. Like, I took a picture of it. I was like, what, do you, what is this? She was like, I, I just yeah, played, maybe. But, um... Watching. 
I think yeah, I think you did address the one the one question I really had about uh, about the doctoral program, which was like ultimately like what what is the the big goal to have here and the fact that just having the master's program in the last like half centennial and now we're moving into a doctoral one that that leads me to believe that the entire like the high level field and research is at that master's level so while there's there's new research being done it still kind of caps there at the master's level of of like research and and work that you put in and then the thought of having that next new tier of learning and research and publication that kind of makes you wonder like what in the next 50 years having that new cap on learning what that actually would look like and it it, it kind of does seem like there's been a lot put into the program just in the, in the last 50 years so what does it look like in another 50 years once we get to the centennial what benefit would it look like to have all like that higher level of of learning and and you could kind of see yeah there's there's a lot more that could be done with with such a relatively new field yeah yeah that's that's true and the field is really i mean in all aspects it's not all that old and uh and it's just the the everybody talks about their time in it i've seen it go from film to digital it's just crazy oh yeah i, I was about to say if there it's is a, a field in medicine that's growing, it is that field. That the the imaging field is is the field that is, you know, it, it's a lot different than the old X-ray machines, as you know, yep. they used to. And, you know. and the new kind of spin now is they're getting into a lot of AI, where since it's computers, you can have a, a AI kind of read an image, uh, artificial intelligence, and it can say, well, these pixels are a different density than this, so there might be something here. So they've been starting to use it for mammography for breast. Mm -hmm imaging and and it's kind of a, a second read so the radiologist will read the image or interpret it and then they'll check the the ai on that and and see did they miss something or so it's another check so i think we're going to see a lot more of that and then just the film i mean the the machinery where pretty soon you probably they they have it's not developed yet but probably your computer at home you want rave a wand over your arm and boom there's your image and <laughs> it's just it's the field is just going to be crazy so we need to keep advancing it and, and yeah. keeping up with it and, and uh, well i just it, i had to look this up just to make sure but uh i'm gonna this is gonna play so fantastic for an audio podcast but um this is i don't have a picture of my of my child yet for my uh for my wallet but i do have a 4d ultrasound picture yeah, there you go of her <laughs> and i just looked to make sure and it said that the first 4d ultrasound for a fetus was only like in the 90s yeah and it, now it, it, i we went to like uh like a a parlor thing that was just like here's here's where we can take just like a million pictures of your your growing baby yeah like yeah. at a million different angles using basically that just like internal like like radio wave imaging and like we saw like we noticed that there were pictures of her like resting her 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 chin <laughs> on her arm like this and we're like, we're like, we'll send pictures, like my wife and I will send pictures to each other and be like, hey, look, she's doing the thing that we saw in the ultrasound. <laughs> and the fact that this is such a new technology, yeah, you really think like there's a lot more that could be done with with the way technology is working now. And like you said, streaming and just the way digital media is growing so quickly. There's there's just endless possibilities. It's crazy. Just, just like, wait till there's like a radiology kiosk at the mall. <laughs> yeah. Just stop in and like yeah. get an get an image of your unborn baby put on a coffee cup. Yeah, and it has. It'll have those like uh, you know, like the the sanitizer dispensers that you <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. you pressed out. It's that, but it's like the stuff you put on the belly to look and all um, the stuff. Yeah, it's, yeah. It just come up, give give yourself a little <laughs> spritz of the the ultrasound goo, and then just put that on there. Yeah, and people can watch you see your baby for the first time <laughs> yeah and what's cool like ultrasound that doesn't use ionizing radiation so it's not harmful and then mris that hasn't been along around that long since the 80s and it's um uses a great big magnet when you go into this bore it, it's it's messing with your atoms it's putting them all in north and south polarities and then it then it sends out a radio frequency it excites your atoms your body when they tilt they give off a radio signal and by that that sound or whatever the frequency gives off that tells the pixels to be 
this color and it comes up with the image so i mean there's just wow. the technology is just crazy that's and, fascinating yeah well there is one other question i wanted to ask you and it's yeah. okay if you don't have an answer to it uh we have joined texas tech are there any changes anything you're doing different because of because of this or not not yet for the college of health science human services this is such a a great thing for us um I've been part of an organization called TSAP. It's the Texas Sign of Allied Health Professions, a uh, uh, past president, and same with the, the president of the College of, of um, the Medicine is Lori Rice Spearman. And she was part of TSAP. She was a past president too. And so we've known each other for many years, and now she's the president of that, that Texas Tech College. And we're so excited because there's so many things we can do. They have programs we don't have. So we're looking at um, ways that our students could go to like PA program or, or things like that. And then maybe since we're part or not maybe, but since we're part of the Texas Tech system, our students should have a little bit more preference than, than the other. So there's a lot of different ventures we can do that. And they don't have radiology or they don't have respiratory and, and some of the programs. So um, we've got a, already a strong... Um, bond and commitment between the, the, the our two colleges or universities. And uh, so it, for us, it's going to be it really be a, a big advantageous uh, adventure for us. So we were excited to, to see that happen. It's like the Wild West, like you have no idea what's going to happen now. Like it's. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's that's incredible. And uh, I, I'm kind of thinking that we might need to do like a, a second installment of this because we're we're running up on an hour and I'm yeah. just like, there's there's so much more we can talk about on this subject. And I really do want to hear more about just the radiology and the department and everything that's happening in, in health sciences and stuff. So I, I almost feel like it's a disservice to to just say like, oh, we're in an hour, we got to end. So <laughs> I, I want to have another another one of these little talks and and just talk more about it because yeah i'm like i'm super fascinated with all those oh cool anytime or come up with questions or whatever whatever you guys like our viewers if they have anything send them to you and okay. oh yeah no we would love to take questions and 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 just just kind of go through those and 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 have you just just answer what our community is wanting to know yeah yeah, we have seven different departments here at the health sciences. So we're one of the largest. And also we we depending on the, the semester, how many students, but we use, we make up thirty-eight percent or more of the universities yeah. or just college. So it's a that's wild. Yeah. That's great. Cool. Well, based on our schedule here, um I guess we kind of want to talk about things coming up in the future. <laughs> is yeah. there anything coming? Because we well, already do we want to jinx that. ourselves? Because uh, we do have a guest <laughs> lined up for next month. Do we want to jinx ourselves by announcing who the guest is going to be for next month? Oh, yes, we should. Okay. Oh, <laughs> yes. So, uh, uh, Marcus. Yes. Yes, Marcus Lopez. Uh, his actual what is he is? His faculty in residence is yep. that his actual yeah. title? Yep. He's I've known Marcus for many uh, years, um, and we we were on the uh, TRLC committee together for a while. He is a great guy. He is fantastic. It should be a lot of fun. Uh, again, I wanted to get somebody in here to talk about that experience, uh, to talk about the the fact that we do have um, faculty actually living in the dorms and what that what what that's like. And and I don't know. Maybe we'll talk math. I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, what it, what it seems like it's going to happen is that we'll we'll have to release this episode next because we we did talk about stuff that's going on in July and I, I kind of want to get this out so people can maybe throughout the summer maybe they can hear more about the health sciences department maybe get a little more interest in before the semester starts. Um, we recorded another episode between the last one that we that we put out, um, but it's. Apparently, it's going to have to be renumbered to like 20 or something. Like, we're going to have to release that one in like a year, I guess, because like we have a lot more stuff going on. We had to release the last one early. Uh, we were interviewing our outreach uh, coordinator, Tasia, who uh, is leaving us today, uh, which I need to go cry about, I guess. Um, so we had to put that one out early, and then we're going to put this one out early, and it's like who knows when we'll ever get to that that other one um but yeah so our our schedule is is kind of weird right now but we're trying to get a little more on track with with our recording and our release cuz there was a there was a big gap uh, uh 
just just within the last year or so where we we just had no idea how how we were going to continue this podcast but uh yeah i'm i'm very much interested in in keeping this conversation going um any like books or shows or or video games or anything on the horizon anyone's interested in Um, chirp, chirp. Yeah, chirp, no, chirp. well, I, I, I've, I've been watching various shows based on on books and or comics and stuff. Uh, we just finished Discovery of Witches, uh, and we watched that first season of uh, Lincoln Lawyer, which I actually really enjoyed. Uh, but we uh, haven't watched the newest season of The Boys yet, so I'll probably do that mm. here in the next couple of weeks. The Boys, the. The first episode of the season has the most disgusting thing I've ever seen. Um, and it's actually a question people had about how Ant-Man could have defeated Thanos. Uh, yes. Jeff, you'll uh, have to excuse them. They're going off in a nerd country for a while. Um, <laughs> I don't they, know what you're talking about. <laughs> they, uh, they, they show that in this, in this episode of The Boys, and it is absolutely horrific and disgusting. And my wife and I were just yelling just wordlessly as it was happening. So enjoy that. Um, <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, we're we're watching the boys. Uh, we we just caught up on Stranger Things, and I I don't yeah. think I like that show. Oh. <laughs> I, I don't know okay. anymore. I really loved season one, and ever since then I've just been like I uh, I don't know. It's just not working for me. Uh, I, I I'm still into it. We finished. We're we're caught up on Stranger Things. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, and, and I enjoyed it. I, I, I think part of it for me is is the nostalgia element. Uh, oh yeah, that, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna keep wa- keep hate watching the Obi Wan Kenobi show. Sure. Uh, I I really I just can't. It's like it's a it it is a trash fire. Um, and Miss Marvel's pretty interesting, so I'll keep watching that too. But yeah. um, other than that, no, nah, yeah, just not not really a whole lot going on. Um, Le- Le- Thor: Love and Thunder. Uh, yeah, Thor. Yeah, I uh, uh, I really yeah, like like I really in July, like right? right? Uh, I'm, July eighth. July eighth. There's yes. no way I'm gonna get out of the house. I can't take my baby to go see a movie right now, so uh, I'll wait until it's on Disney. <laughs> um. Yeah. Nothing else for me, Jeff. Jeff, thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you all. Enjoyed it. I was asking if Jeff had anything that he was looking forward to, but oh, okay. Uh, oh, just work. I've got a lot of conferences coming up, so start next week. Uh, I'm gonna go to Orlando for a week, and Kentucky, Missouri, or else Orlando in the summer, Jeff. Come oh, on. Oh, I know that's ridiculous. Why they have? Oh, that's, I guess they like, have conferences there because uh, it's cheap. <laughs> you know, there was all, a conference, conference for the American Library it. Association they wanted to send me to in Orlando in July, and I was like, no. Yeah. No. Oh yeah. Not going. Oh, yeah. Here. You're making like a whole circuit around the the eastern seaboard oh, there. Just, it looks yeah. like everybody has these conferences, and so I got to attend most of them. So this next about uh, from July, I'm gone pretty much starting now. It's just just until August, so it's crazy. Yeah. So there's there's a message for our for our community. If you do have any questions for Jeff, wait. <laughs> uh, keep keep I'll be them back in August. <laughs> yeah. Keep them just just for for a little while, or send them to us, and we'll we'll send them over. There you go. Yeah. We'll get some good food in, if nothing else. Yeah. That's why oh, I yeah. Restaurants in Orlando, so. Looking forward to Colorado. It might be cooler there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah if it should be. Fail, so. Yeah. If there is any wildfires, so, you know. I know. That's the bad part. <laughs> I'm yeah, my, that. Hopefully it gets more rain. <laughs> my neighbor has a, has a vacation home in Colorado, so every now and then he'll just be like, hey, can you make sure no one breaks into our house because we're going to be gone for, like, 14 weeks. But... <laughs> Yeah, sure. <laughs> I guess. Uh, we got a couple of faculty here that have to do that too. I got some nurse faculty. They're up in Colorado now. They stay there all summer, so must be nice. <laughs> yeah, I, I bet it is. <laughs> all right. Thanks so much for for joining us, Jeff. And like I said, we'll 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 invite you on for another one. We'll have all a part right, two. All right. Sounds good. it. It was fun. All right. Uh, anything else to add? I think that's it for this one. All right. Well, thank you everyone for listening. Uh, we'll have this up soon, and then we'll uh, we'll have our episode uh, with Marcus soon after that. So uh, thank you all. Send us some questions if you got them, and we will see you, hear you, listen to you on the next installment of Club <laughs> Muppet Talks. Bye.
Bye-bye.